Hey everybody, Jeremy Senpai here, and I am once again coming to you to give my uh, thoughts and opinions on wealth and going into a deeper analysis on entertainment. And today's subject is the Netflix series Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. It started off as a graphic novel series, it became a movie, it became a video game, and now it's an animated and now it's an animated series on stream, specifically on Netflix. And honestly, I am all here for it. Okay, first a little backstory on me and Scott Pilgrim. Me and this series, we kind of have a bit of a love-hate relationship. You see, one of my best friends really loves the video game and the movie, and I'm always, I've always wanted to see it and give it a try. It's not really a not interested thing, it's more of a, oh crap, I keep forgetting thing. But anyway, with the release of the, of the anime, I decided to start playing the games, I've read the comics, and I've given the movie a watch. And you know something? I am hooked. I'm officially a Scott Pilgrim fan. So after re-watching the Netflix series and everything else, I decided to finally let it all digest and give my thoughts and opinions. Alright, Scott Pilgrim takes off. Anyone who is a diehard fan of the Scott Pilgrim series already knows already knows what to expect. Scott Pilgrim, a couch-hopping kind of loser who is dating a high schooler, falls in love at first sight with the impeccable Ramona Flowers. Only thing, in order to go out with her, you need to defeat her seven evil exes. Alright, we already know how it's gonna go. Matthew Battelle is squaring up. It looks like Scott's about to win, only for Scott to up and disappear completely knocking us all out of left field. We thought we knew what to expect, but we were proven wrong. And honestly, the series went in such a direction that I don't think any of us expected, but at the same time, we didn't know that we wanted and needed this. It The name of the show may be Scott Pilgrim, but it became Ramona Flower's story. And honestly, I really love it. Because Ramona Flowers, this became her story. Specifically, this became her story for for closure and redemption. Because Ramona eventually starts looking into Scott's disappearance to find out what happened to him. And it's worth noting that the two haven't even gone on an official date yet. But because she's that interested in Scott, she decides to poke her nose in fervor. This eventually leads her to the video store where Kim works, and this is probably my personal favorite episode, where we see Roxy Richter come in and start fighting against Ramona. And this is where we start to see how their how their relationship and ultimate breakup and fall apart. You see, in the movie, Ramona literally refers to Roxy as a phase she was going through, saying that she was bi-curious. And, but then we actually see the flashback. We see Ramona just walk away without giving Roxy another look. And that really hurt. I mean, how much hurt do you, can somebody feel when they don't even get a second glance at the person that they were so close to? And this is where Ramona starts to realize something, that she did mess up, at least to a degree. Yes, all, all of her evil exes, quote-unquote evil, they did mess up in their own right, but Ramona... But Ramona definitely didn't do them any favors either, and I'll get into that a bit more as we go through each evil ex, at least in order. Mm. Ramona actually apologizes to Roxy, and Roxy accepts it, and she wastes no time in moving on, sharing a very graphic kiss with Kim, which honestly I didn't know I needed, but let's be honest, Kim and Knives, they are a thing. 
What the hell? I mean, sexuality is pretty fluid on this show. <laughs> I mean, you thought the Owl House was gay? This show takes it to another level. Anyway, anyway. <clears throat> and then, even though there are no sparks, Roxanne... Roxy is not wasting a time saying, ooh, what about your hot co-worker? And then she leaves, and I'm going to be honest with you, Roxy is probably my favorite of the seven exes. I'm not even going to call them evil, because honestly, only a handful of them really are. And Mae Whitman, she still got it, man. She knows how to play crazy in all the right ways. All right? Uh, Ramona solves things with Roxy, and then moves on to Lucas Lee, who's probably my second favorite evil ex. Oh, I just said evil anyway, because, well, we really have him go through his Hollywood diva phase, but it's also hard to hate the guy at the same time. I think that's mainly due to Chris Evans. Anyway, anyway, we do see how Lucas and Ramona got together, the fact that they were basically just high schoolers, the fact that Ramona was always there for him, but as soon as Todd Ingram enters, the Fay enters, as soon as Todd Ingram enters the scene, she basically dumps Lucas for him, and Lucas very much decides to become a great actor, the most popular actor and skateboarder ever. And you can even make an argument they kind of did this a little bit as a coping mechanism, granted in a toxic way. You know, not that different where if somebody breaks up with you and you want to get your revenge bod. But overall, Ramona does apologize to him and they actually end things on good terms. Next up is Todd Ingram, who, who is probably my third favorite ex, Brandon Roof. He is amazing and underrated, whether it's Superman or the Atom. Anyway, anyway, very interestingly, Todd Ingram falls for Wallace, of all people. Remember what I said earlier about sexuality being fluid? Well, this is one of the main reasons. He falls for Wallace, of all people. I mean, he fell hard, but he just wasn't expecting to get feelings out of it. And Wallace did handle things in this pretty own toxic way, saying that it was just a, it was just a fling, which sadly does send poor Todd into a downward spiral, where he basically gives up his vegan lifestyle. And it is worth noting that even though Ramona has no reason for Todd, she does hope for him the best. She does try to be there for him, which she does. Okay, it's worth noting that with these three exes specifically, it does say a lot about having a rela about a simple conversation. It says a lot about having a conversation with someone that you wronged or just had a falling out with. A simple, I'm sorry, can go a long, long way. But I just want to point out that Ramona does have her own share of faults, and each of the exes do as well. And they do, for the most part, own up to theirs in their own way. They, Ramona basically says, yes, I messed up, but you guys messed up in your own way too. Which does say a lot. Okay, now we move on to the twins and their robot. I'm just going to count all this as one entry. So Ramona actually dated both of the twins in college, but because they were both flirts and players, she decided to date both of them and eventually turned them against each other. I'm not going to lie, that was really a dirty move. Um... Okay, I'm speedrunning here a bit. Matthew Battelle, who was her middle school boyfriend, which may or may not count. I mean, does anyone actually consider their middle school uh, boyfriend or girlfriend to be official official? But, she, but again, Ramona does cut ties with him and does leave him. And finally, we get to Gideon. Or Goose, uh, whichever. I'm just going to call him Goose because it's easier for me to remember. Yeah, there's there's no defending this guy. He is definitely an evil ex. In the comic books, he actually wanted Ramona to be a literal trophy wife. 
he was emotionally abusive, a bit of a man child. So she's probably so this breakup is probably the only one that I justify where Ramona made the right call. However, after Goose loses everything, he does go he does go back to Julie who honestly they have a bit of a semi toxic semi-stable-ish relationship where they kind of bring out the worst of the best of each other, if that makes sense. Yep, they're both pretty evil in their own right, and apparently that's what works for them. Anyway, when Ramona meets up with Goose to find out what happened to Scott, she does make things right with him, too. And surprisingly, he even takes it well blowing everything that happened in the comics out of left field, basically saying, I'm not completely evil anymore, so there's no need to worry. And Ramona literally just takes it on the chin. Granted, he's planning revenge against Matthew Battelle, but you know what, he's not against Ramona and Scott, so that's kind of progress, I guess. Okay. The main thing about these seven evil exes and their thing with Ramona, think about think about the main narrative here in Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. These are basically seven people who all date the same girl at different points in their lives, middle school, high school, college, and early adulthood, and they can't let it go for whatever reason. Look, this may suck to hear, but middle school and high school relationships rarely work out. College is where you're a bit more experimental in finding yourself, so I can kind of understand. But even when you're a young adult, it doesn't mean you've got everything figured out. But that's the but that's the main narrative right there. These are seven people. Six men, one woman, who can't get over the girl that they once dated, so they try to ruin any prospects anyone else would have in dating her. That is insane when you really think about it. And and this isn't even an excuse like they're all little kids. They are grown adults in their early to mid-twenties. Think about that. That is insane. But as I pointed out before, because <clears throat> because Ramona mm, took the time to actually admit her faults, just as they did, and to give them a sense of closure, then they actually become better people. So, like I said before, nobody likes a breakup, but at the same time, no one likes it when you're just outright ghosted or ignored. And that's basically what Ramona did for each of them. Ramona has a habit of running away when things are at their hardest. She ran away from Matthew, Vettel, she traded Lucas Lee for Todd, she ran away from Roxy, she turned the twins against each other, and as I said before, uh, Goose, the relationship with Goose is probably the only one I actually approve of, because I get it. No, no one wants to be around an abusive evil ex. So that's probably the only one I'll give her leeway on. But a simple apology, a conversation, because they have room to grow. They are mature. They are willing to talk about it like adults instead of just getting angry and laying it all out. Yes, sometimes it's important to be angry. Sometimes it's important to let all that pent out, all those pent up emotions out for your own sake. And that's what Ramona does for them. Granted, this was kind of more of a side mission while she was looking for Scott, but she did make a world of difference. All right, now we move on to the main plot twist here. As we find out, Scott didn't actually die. Scott Pilgrim was actually kidnapped to the future by an older version of himself. And we see that, well, Nala has really changed. Scott and Scott is still slumming it with Wallace. 
Granted, by this point, Wallace is married, so he's basically slumming off of Wallace's rich husband. But we also see that Scott is good friends with the twins who actually helped him who actually helped him develop time travel in the first place. Basically, older Scott kidnapped the younger version of himself so he would never fight the evil exes in the first place and go out with Ramona. Yeah. <clears throat> And we actually learn about a few years later that Ramona and Scott do get married. They dated for a while. Everything went the way you'd expect. The evil exes showed up. Scott defeated them. He dated Ramona before they got married. However, we find out recently now that they had a bit of a falling out. Older Scott claims that they are divorced. However, n however, younger Scott, R. Scott, younger Scott, R. Scott still wants to make it work. He still wants to try it with Ramona, even going against the forceful advice of his older version. And then we get to see older Ramona because she did help Scott get back to the past so everything can be set right. So we have Scott back in his own time. He officially breaks things off with knives and actually gives her more closure than he did in the movie, literally telling, and yes, there were a bit of hurt feelings, but they really cemented Knives' character a lot better here than most cases. She actually develops... She actually develops a great relationship with the rest of the band, becoming their fourth, developing music talents that she never knew she had. So, I definitely like Knives better here than what they did in other media. Alright, then we find out that for some reason, uh... For some reason, Scott and Ramona still can't kiss for whatever reason. So, Scott thinks that he has to square up again against the evil exes. But nope, because Ramona gave them closure, they're all fine now. They're even rooting for Scott, almost like they've been friends for years. Which is probably one of the better endings for them. In the comics and the games and the movies, they all die, but nope. They are their own characters that underwent their own arcs of growth. And honestly, I'm all for it. And then we get to a climax of Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Or should I say, the world versus Scott Pilgrim. Because now Scott, Ramona, their friends, and the exes are all kidnapped even further into the future. We meet an older version of Scott Pilgrim who 10 years after his younger self went back to the past, 10 years after his younger self went back to the past, decided to triple down even further and decides that he's going to wipe out his younger self, young Ramona, and all of their friends. Yeah, so it's literally the world versus Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, that that is beyond insane right there. And they do manage to do pretty good. Grand, the rest of the gang are sent back to the are sent back to the past. But then we meet e older Ramona again, and then we're hit with the revelation. As it turns out, they were never divorced. They just separated. So basically, we have Scott and Ramona that eventually fell back on their toxic traits. We have Scott, who, no, who was still very much, still very much a man child, falling back on his immature traits, believing that's never his fault; it's everybody else's fault. Except this is taken to a much more exaggerated degree. And we have Ramona once again running away when things get hard. However, older Ramona now, seeing her young self and young Scott, decides that she is done running away. And it's also worth noting, I'd like to think, that they completely changed the course of all this. We literally... 
because young Scott and young Ramona saw their older selves for all of their faults, like uh, both of their toxic traits, Scott still being a bit immature and nothing really changing, and Ramona running away but only but only giving up on it towards the end. They, because now they realize these toxic traits, they're going to make the conscious effort in order to do better about themselves, so that way this doesn't happen. So it's also a pretty nice case of of irony right there. Because they met their older selves, they can make sure that those versions of themselves never come to pass. Not too bad, I like to think. With some help from the two Ramonas fusing together into what I'm gonna call pure Ramona, they send older Scott back to his time so older Ramona can go back to him and hopefully work things out. And then we finally have Scott and Ramona go back to their <clears throat> go back to their time. They share the kiss just like they always do, and things move on. We see that each of the exes are starting to move on with their lives. <laughs> Lucas Lee is doing good as a barista. And Todd and Todd and Roxy are bringing out the best in each other. The twins are studying their stuff. <laughs> so. And of course, we have the friend gang all back together. So, you know, it all works out. Until we get to the end where it looks like that Goose and... Where it looks like that Goose and Julie might have an evil plan of their own. And you know what? Even though we have the official confirmation that there are currently no plans for season two, it could end right here and I'd be fine with it. But at the same time, I'd be lying if I said I'm not hungry for more. So you know what? I'm pretty satisfied either way. So, this is basically my take on Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. This whole interpretation was Ramona's story, and I'm all for it. As I've said multiple times already, you'd be surprised how a simple conversation or a simple I'm sorry can make a world of difference. Ramona did that and really fleshed out her character better here than, in my opinion, they ever did in previous media. <clears throat> I just want to point out that, from a personal standpoint, I never really got that with some people I knew. I've had friends, I've had people I genuinely care about ghost me and they threw me away without any explanation whatsoever. And... Honestly, I'm too scared to ever find out the reason why. I was just thrown away for whatever reason. So, that pain is pretty much always going to be there. The pain of why wasn't I good enough? Why did this have to happen? And I may never get that kind of closure. But at the same time, I'm moving forward in my own way. So, bottom line, everybody... If you think that you've wronged somebody, at least own up to your part in it. Admit that you did wrong, and you'd be surprised how much healing you can do for the other person in addition to yourself. It's a small thing, just apologizing, but it really does mean a lot. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for now. I hope you enjoyed my little rendition here. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. This is Jeremy Senpai, sign off. Until next time.